Um, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm, it's probably always a combination of both. When you ever have an injury, whether you pop your hamstring or whatever it is, I mean, it's. Um, but but those are choices that you know that we have to make. I mean, it was unfortunate we had to make that push to get into the playoffs, but you know we did, and uh, and it happened. And this is what it is. Was it your choice? Of course, I mean, Mike's really gonna tell me when to go in and out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Could you do it again? I mean, I mean obviously knowing now, but would yeah. you do it again? Yeah, I would have. I would Is there a coach that could keep you in and out of a game that exists? Nah, you know, you know what's funny? Nah, I mean, we, we, you got like really can't ride Mike too hard about this because it's really, you know, it's uh, uh, you know, Magic used to check themselves in the games too. MJ used to check himself in the games too. And I'm just following their example, so I used to do the same thing with Phil. Kobe, what do you think of this? Um, yeah, I, I think the couple areas that you know that, that you look at for improvement are kind of you know um, length, um, speed, you know some of that athleticism that can kind of offset um, uh, uh, some of the deficiencies we have in that department. So I think if we can figure out a way to to to, to bring some of that length and athleticism, um, I think we should be all right. Are you fearing big changes? A little bit, you know, I understand cap situation, so you know, that's always a concern. Um, but all I can do is just voice my opinion and, you know, what I think should be done. But it's obviously it's not, I'm not the one that has to cut the check, you know. So all I can do is just, uh, you know, give him my two cents and um, go from there. How important do you think it is for Dwight to resign? I think it's very important. I, I, I think he's, uh, uh, I hope he does. I, it, it's, it's really just a matter of, uh, you know what he feels in his heart, he wants to do. Uh, he's kind of reached a kind of a, a crossroads of his career, um, and um, I think Los Angeles is a perfect spot for him uh, to assert himself and to kind of you know, put his foot down and, and 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 have his career really take off and be what it should be. Um, you know, there's no greater place for centers to play than here in Los Angeles. So um, I, I'll talk to him, man. I'll talk to him, and you know. Bring him out to the house and uh, you know, chill with him a little bit, watch another cartoon movie or something, and uh, we'll have a good time. Is what you just said going to be your overall message to him, or is there more that you're going to tell Yeah, that man, that'll that'll be my message to him. I mean, he, he, you know, you look at what he's done in the second half of the season; it's been pretty impressive, man. And, you know, coming off a of back surgery as well, so um, you know, this summer he's got all summer to get himself in the, the tip-top form, and next year I think he'll be. A, it would be unbelievable. You've been one of Powell's biggest defenders. Did you, did you put a good word in for him when you were up there? Yeah, of course. Of course. I, you know, I tweeted what I thought about that. I'm sure you guys didn't miss that. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. Powell comes here, you go to three straight finals. He, he said that you've grown in your friendship, your personal relationship, really every year. You're closer ever than now. How do you reflect back on him now, just thinking of that side of you putting your arms on him on the bench? Uh, how do you think about your time with Powell since that's it's been so far? Yeah, I think it's been incredible. I mean, since, since he first got here, when, he, when we first traded for him, um, I think we we're getting ready to play the Nets. As soon as he got in, I just went down to his room and we just talked for, for about 30 minutes. And um, you know, from that point forward, I mean, we've always had a brotherly relationship. So. When do you make your decision about how many more years you're going to play? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Achilles kind of. You know, threw me a curveball, so I, I kind of got to think about this a little bit right now. Am I? Yeah, but we'll see. Cole, you've dealt with a lot of injuries over the years, the ones you've always played with, but knowing that this Achilles completely wiped out your season, how tough was it just to watch your team the last few games? That no, was real tough. You know, I, I just tried to help them out as much as I could, um, and try to do whatever I could to make a contribution. But it, it, it's tough, man. It, it's really, really tough. Man. You know, it's worse when you come out there on the court. It's worse because you come out there on the court, and now you can feel the intensity of the game. You can feel the momentum of the game. And you, know, you kind of reach a point mentally where, you know, once I had this injury, this career ending, as a player, you know, I'm able to shut down, you know, that the rage and kind of the, the fire that I was playing with. You know what I mean? It's, I was able to shelf that. 
as soon as I walked back down there on the court, everything just came right back. And um, so, I mean, it was, it was it's hard. You expect so many times that the, the another championship is going to block priority or, or maybe multiple championships you don't play in. Where do you see that goal right now? It's still the same. Still the same. I mean, we didn't play that bad. I mean, since the Memphis game, we really didn't play that bad. Um, so you know, I, I would really love to see our guys come back. You know, our core guys come back. You know, Powell. Um, you know, being being our guy. Um, and you know, Dwight obviously. You know, but the rumors and everything that's swirling around Powell leaving here. Um, you know, I say Powell front and center because of that. Um, and you know, to me, it's a no-brainer. We need him to get to where we need to go. And um, like I said, it's not my money. I'm not the one that has to pay suffer those penalties. But you know, my vote would be to keep him here. But Kobe, you do have a lot of cash here with this organization. Obviously, there's pressure to pay him. Maybe have a lot of influence. Um, if they come to you, or maybe they already have, and say, "Hey, what do you think we should do?" Well, I mean, I was pretty clear when I, when I met with Mitch. I was pretty clear about that, and I said I want Pow here. It's not even, it's not even a question. It's not, it's not a discussion with me. I think he gives us the best chance uh, to win titles. And uh, you bring Dwight back, and you know we, we're off and running. But you know, you, you, you also have to look how well they start playing together. That, that puzzle finally got solved. <laughs> finally got solved, man. We were all just kind of clicking and rolling, and. Um, fortunately, circumstances beyond control kind of put a put a wet blanket over it. Um, but that's my message. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe, Dr. Bus, Dr. Bus, Bond, can you be as certain as you have been in past boss seasons about the direction of the organization? Um, I think you have to be very Yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, you just got to have the trust. I mean, it, it seems to me like the, the, this organization, no matter what it goes through, always seems to endure. It just always seems to land on its feet. It, it, it's just. Uh, one of those franchises, man. It just always seems to so figure its way out. Right. Um, yeah, I do. I do. And I, I know. I know Jimmy's, uh, you know, taking care of the basketball operations, and Jimmy's doing her thing from the business side. And I'm sure uh, I'll talk to Jimmy. I'm sure I'll talk to Jeannie as well, and with the Bus family, and just uh, figure out what we want to do. I mean, it's it's obviously it's a, you know, it's a lot on the table for them you know, with these new penalties and so forth. So it's kind of like. You know, it's a, it's a tough call to make, um, but then again, it is one more year. It's one more year, and that's what I look at. I'm like, you know, it's one more year at this thing, and I don't know how I'm going to suit up. Our contracts are in, that, you know, finished next year. Pals is done next year. It's like, you know, hopefully we get Dwight locked up so he's here for a while, and so the future is kind of set already, and you know, let's take a crack at this thing. Kobe, from an injury standpoint, <clears throat> Whenever a player has an injury like the one that you have, there are certain mental hurdles that they have to get over. Have you gotten over those, and how did you get over those mental hurdles? <laughs> mental hurdles like what? Oh, the mental hurdles of, oh, my goodness, why did it have to happen? To oh, yeah, know, yeah, that's, that was... More, that kind of thing. Yeah, that, that was over the minute I vented on Facebook. <laughs> 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 you know, really, I mean, it was like, you know, I had a chance to get it off my chest, you know, because those are emotions that I had. I mean, it was just one that's first you go through sadness and you go through frustration and you go through anger. And then you reach the point where you say, okay, I got to be resilient. I got to be resilient. This thing's not going to beat me, you know? And so that's the stage I'm at right now. And, um, you know, just kind of attacking it with the same kind of confidence that I would in you know, my training regimen every summer. Yes. What, what, what makes you so, what makes you so confident that you can be back open? Well, I think the staff that that we have here, I think, uh, you know, the technology that we have available to ourselves, and you know, the, the the understanding of this injury, you know, whereas in the past players might have waited four or five days to go in for the operation, where you let scar tissue develop and settle, you know, uh, I was advised to do it the next day, where the scar tissue doesn't settle, you know, where you, where you don't have to um, have as much time to recover, and uh, the swelling is less, and, and that's what I did. So I'm already ahead of the curve. So. I think from a medical standpoint, that's what gives me the confidence. And then from just from me, I, I know how hard I'm willing to work. I know I have to be patient. And so I think you factor those two things together. That's why I'm confident about it. Well, do you think Dwight's coming back? Excuse me? Do you think Dwight's going to re the I would say so. I would say, I would say yes. Um, well, you know, we, we all pride ourselves on being businessmen to a certain extent. 
And I think just from a business standpoint, it makes more sense, you know, both contractually and um, also perception-wise. This is an incredible market. It's a great place. A lot of things go well for you when you win here. And um, I think that all you got to put all that into a pot, you know, as well as the team that we have. Uh, we didn't get off to the greatest start. You know, we had a lot of ups and downs, a little turmoil here and there. Um, but, again, since that Memphis game, we played pretty – darn well and we still had a lot of injuries during that 28 and 12 window uh, that we were able to play through so I, I if I was him I'd, I'd be sorry say say again yeah I, I think so. I, he's made a lot of adjustments I, I think at the start it was tough um, because he had his way that he wanted to play and kind of wanted to stick to that a little bit and it took a little while for him to bend and, and kind of relent a little bit and bring power in along with us and which he finally which he finally decided to do and since we've done that, I mean, we, we've had absolutely no issues. How much of a role did you have in D'Antoni making those adjustments against Kyle back then? Well, I mean, I, I was I was the vocal one. You know, I was a vocal one that kind of said, hey, you know, we're eight games under 500. Like, we got to <laughs> – enough is enough, you know. And to his credit, he sat down and took it and, you know, made changes and – we went on from there. Kobe, a lot of the teams that are still playing have had the type of cohesion, you know, with the, the coach of the roster, just the guys to be able to learn each other. Uh, how, how difficult does that make <coughs> a team like this with three coaches the last three years? How important is it going forward to kind of figure out the plan? And then, and well, I mean, you, you got to take this season, and if, if we can gain something positive from this season, it's, it's bringing most of the guys back. This way, this season, is, you, just, you just don't lose this season. And what I mean by that is when you, when you go through a season like this, and you're five games out of the playoffs, and all of a sudden you have this incredible run, and now we not only end up in the playoffs, but you end up with the seventh seed um, coming from where we came from. It does something to the character of the group. You know, it builds it together, and it's an understanding. Like, there's no more confusion about, you know, how I should play with Dwight, or how Dwight should play with Powell, and all this other stuff. Go it's not there anymore. So to allow that to dissipate and have, it to, have to do that again with another group Heading. Did you hear some of the talk about when we first got heard that, that the Lakers should ambush you? Curious no, I didn't hear it at all. <laughs> <laughs> curious your reaction to that. I, man, I, yeah, I found it. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I mean, I, you know, you, from a, I understand what everybody is saying from a business perspective. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I enjoy that kind of chatter. Did you enjoy it as much when Mark Cuban said that? Well, yeah, I mean, you saw what happened to Mark Cuban. So, I mean, I got a whole summer to sit on this one. <laughs> so yeah. I, 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 took, I took notes of who said what. You guys <laughs> talked a lot. If all the big decisions were up to you to make, what changes do you think are absolutely necessary for the Lakers to go all the way next week? I think just length and speed and athleticism. A couple guys that can provide that force. You guys talked a lot in the preseason about collective sacrifice and what it would take for to get four, four Hall of Fame caliber players together. How difficult? Do you guys think you understood really how difficult that would be once everybody got off the floor? Yeah, we understood it, but we never really had a chance <laughs> to develop it because, you know, it was just injury after injury after injury, and it was just crazy. And then uh, a new coaching staff with a system that didn't fit, and so we had to work through that as well. So it was, it was just a constant pro you know, process for us. And, but we finally figured it out and still had to deal with injuries and play well enough to get the seventh seed. So uh, we knew what the challenge was going to be, but at the same time, we didn't expect to have to deal with all of these all of these injuries. Is there any sense you guys would, I know you don't, don't think you have to start over, but since none of the guys were ever on the floor together, is it difficult? <coughs> no, we know, we know what we need to do. We know how we need to play together because we, we know what that rhythm feels like. That's what I'm saying is it, it's great to bring the group back, um, the core guys back, because we know what we have to do and we know how lethal we can be. Um, so, you know, to, to break that apart and now have to start fresh again with another group, man, it's just. How, how would you jump through? What could you guys do? Say what again? If everything's bad and healthy, what could you guys do? We can win a championship. I, no doubt about it. How would you describe the way your past relationship has grown over the years? Why do you think you two have been so long? Well, we just, we get along. You know, we get along. We get along extremely well. You know, our personalities match, and you know we're, um, you know, we're, we're opposite in personalities, um, but it, it matches and it works. You know, he, uh, I told him, I said, you know, before every game now, this is before the Houston game. I said, oh, this is Houston game. 
it was use again. So you have to come over to my house, just kick it. You know, I got a little therapy room. We did a little therapy in the room there and mm-hmm. hang out with my kids, man, just watch a movie and just goof around. Because we went out the next night and had a ridiculous triple double. So it was like, you know, this is part of your routine now. I mean, the, the worst case is what? I lose some athleticism, I lose some speed. I see a lot of guys who are not athletic and don't have speed that are still pretty damn good. And, <laughs> and I think I'm a little better than them, so I think I can adjust. I can't help it. <laughs> say, say again. Are, are you a more dangerous team going into the next season? Assuming everybody's healthy, people are going to be expecting you guys to know you're old and you're coming off all the injuries. Does it make you more dangerous? Um, yeah, I, I would think so. You kind of fly below the radar a little bit, and I, and I think it builds a, you know, kind of a, it puts a chip on your shoulder um, that we carry around, carry around with us um, all summer. And uh, coming into next year, knowing exactly what we need to do, knowing how we like to play together, and uh, there's no <coughs> guessing. You know, there's no having to figure anything out. We know exactly what we're going to do. And starting day one in training camp, we're going to do it. So we came that far enough that you know how Oh, to for, sure. for sure. You for sure. For sure. Mike accepted that? I mean, like, he, within the training camp, he's not going to try to go back and do things the way he wanted to in the first place? No, no, not at all. Um, not a, we talked about that, actually. It's not something that he's um, even considering. I mean, you got Powell here, you got Dwight here. We're going to play. We're going to post the ball hard, man. We're going to post the ball hard. We're going to slow it down. and. Um, you have the opportunity to run, you run. I mean, same same way we've been playing. Same way we've been playing. Did you guys spend to him at all, or was it mostly Mike coming toward the roster? Um, it was Mike coming towards the roster. I mean, we, we just, you know, we could run for probably one night, but, <laughs> you know, after that we just physically couldn't do it. Coach, literally, literally half your life you've given to the, this team on the court. I don't know if you're, what happened to your body this year changes anything, but when you come out you get the ovation, uh, what's going through your mind in the game four? Don't tear up, because then you look like the biggest chump in the world. <laughs> don't tear up and don't trip. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's that's what went on in my mind, man. Kobe, the Lakers are gonna play the first preseason game in China. Were you gonna be there? Are you still gonna be there? I'll be there, but I, you know, I, 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 um, I seriously doubt I'll be ready to play, but I'll, I'll definitely be there. Kobe, you have that ad that Nike put out also on the things that. You can do and what you're going to do as a fan's reaction to you. All the support you've gotten, considering the amount of years you've played in the NBA, how, how do you feel about that? It, it, it drives me. It drives me. It gives me more fuel and, 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 and you know more focus and, and to, to have that support. You know, and to to see all the fans and what they say and what they post about. You know, don't listen to what everybody says about you, know, you being done or being finished or being over the hill. And, you know. You know, this injury at your age can't come back and all sort of stuff. You know, they believe in me. And you know, I I I take that and I wear that with a badge of honor to not disappoint them and show them that you know we we can rise up again and we can do things that we did before. So I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. Um for him to be able to come out and have the courage to do so. I think it sets a great example. Great precedent, man. So somebody somebody's gotta be the one that steps up to the front and and, uh, and and kind of takes the leadership on that. I'm, I'm I'm glad he did. What was it like for you? You know, when you were back in the summer of 2007, people thought you were crazy. Here you are, seven years, six years later, you're kind of like the spokesman of the league now, and everybody was talking about Jason Collins. Like, who better to comment on than Kobe Bryant? It's, it, what is it like for you to go through that transformation? You know what? It, it's uh, it's just consistency. You know, you know, you know, I'm gonna sit down and blurt something out that I just really believe in. You know, I truly believe, and some people like it, some people don't. But you know, I'm gonna keep it real with you. So um, I think that's where that comes from: is not being afraid to voice your opinion or what you, you like feel that? like you have to say. Like the like well, it, to you <coughs> well, I, I never, I never really viewed it as that. I just viewed it like I, I saw that. And I said, well, this is how I feel about it. So this is, so I'm gonna say it, and, and then where it goes from there, it goes from there. Um, but. You know, especially you know, 17 years in the league, you kind of feels, you feel relieved to not have to. Oh my God, I can't say this or I can't say that. You know, it's just, it's like. <sighs> kind of 
time for two more. Go. You mentioned the 17 years in the league. You came in with Steve Nash uh, back in '96. I know it was a very tough season on him. How do you reflect on on the, just that you guys seem to share a collective work ethic and have a lot in common? How would you reflect on Steve? This I, it was great to see him work every day because obviously you know we've we've dealt with each other um, you know from a distance for many years, but it's great to see him work to see him go through his progressions. See him, see how he thinks the game from behind the scenes. Kind of pull the curtain back a little bit, and uh, say, "Oh, damn! If I knew that, maybe we could have beat them." You know, in two thousand and you know six and two thousand and seven, maybe we. But then you get a chance to see his greatness because he's extremely intelligent, and um, um, his work ethic is unbelievable. So I mean, it's been it's, it's been fun. Coach, speaking of all the support that you have right now to people around you, sometimes people seem to forget that. It wasn't all peachy. There was a time where it wasn't all support for you with you never wanting to be traded and all of that. And right now, Dwight's in a situation where he gets love and he gets hate from the media here. So what kind of advice could you give to him with you having been in that situation? Just be yourself. Just be yourself. If you feel one a certain way, voice it. There's nothing wrong with that. You, know, you can't please everybody. There's going to be people who love you and people who don't like you. But the... the, the my advice to him is where, you, where I come out on it is be yourself. Allow people to judge you for who you are. If they don't see really who you are, then they're not really judging you fairly.